So my name is Matt Whitmer. I'm a senior principal engineer uh, or solutions engineer for Open Gear. Um, in another life, I was uh, actually a network engineer for over 25 years and free, you know, frequent user of Open Gear and Digi products uh, you know, over the last decade or so. Um, so today I'm going to basically kind of uh, demonstrate some of what Ryan was talking about, about the extensibility or flexibility of the Open Gear platforms, not just from being a console, uh, a console server, but, you know, we have the presence and proximity uh, in your IDFs or in your remote locations or even in your core, core sites, uh, you know, to be able to run uh, pretty much whatever you can think of uh, type of customized apps or applications such as Thousand Eye Agents as uh, Ryan put out. Um, so what you'll see in this demo is some of the extensibility, uh, flexibility. I'll cover a little bit of the IP access, for, I, Lighthouse IP access for remote stuff in a couple diagrams. Um, and then I'm gonna show, uh, you know, how we can deploy, you know, a custom web app uh, to an Open Gear, uh, an operations manager uh, 2224 box uh, to help operators uh, do their day-to-day -day tasks. All right, so you know, there's a lot of we, we've been talking quite a bit about, uh, and Ryan has hit on about using Docker, something like Docker, uh, to deploy uh, remote apps uh, on the Open Gear nodes, specifically the uh, OMs and the CM8100. You 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 have the ability to deploy uh, any x86 type of Docker, Docker applications, such as DHCP, uh, ISC DHCP, or you know, TFTP server, iPerf. Uh, the examples I'll give today is basically uh, a Flask, a Python Flask app um, that's using G units, being served by G Unicorn and proxied with NGNX. So here's one way you can deploy it. You can have an operator, he's VPN the Lighthouse, and that Lighthouse in turn has a VPN connection down to the remote open gear node. So you can actually push your Docker container down that way or access a uh, Docker file that's already on the remote open gear node. And just to go a little even further, um, you know, this, you know, taking a look at our SDI or our IP access solution as part of the uh, Lighthouse NetOps module, um, you can actually VPN into Lighthouse, uh, which already has a VPN established through remote open gear node, which then gives you access down either through serial uh, or IP down to your managed infrastructure, your managed devices, a switch or a router. Uh, so you can get to that remotely over encrypted connections. And you'll be able to access, you know, any app or whatever you have deployed on that remote open gear node. So today I'm actually just going to show uh, uh, an application, basically just a simple web app that's going to issue commands down to, uh, you know, so a couple a router switch and a, a, a Juniper SRX. So just to set the story up uh, on the application, so basically what we're looking at is your typical help desk scenario here, right? An escalation ticket. Uh, I can't ping, right? Uh, so help desk receives. A call saying they can access file share, IT support. They try to access the resource and ping the file server, but they fail to do so. So rather than do any troubleshooting, they just go ahead and send that to the network team. And of course, the poor network engineer, he looks at this and he asks the support guy, you know, what did you, did you do any troubleshooting or you just mimicked what the uh, user did? Yeah, because it's not the network. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You blame the network first, right? <laughs> uh, so, you know, some of it is the barriers. There's some barriers, right? We've, we've all seen it, you know, help desk staff might not want to log in and do CLI. They might have the skill. Uh, so they might not know how to access or how to collect it because, you know, to some, the CLI uh, command line can be uh, daunting. Uh, and then, of course, there's, you know, the best practices. There's the security aspects to it where you want to limit user access to the devices. So, you know, 
you know, how can you make these uh, issue resolution uh, a little better using a deployable app? So, you know, you create deployable app templates that make info gathering easier that you can put on a, on a ticket or, uh, you know, send over to the network engineer, hey, this is what I already did. But you got to make that really easy for that help desk guy because he might have been, you know, right out of right out of high school or very little experience, uh, or he's just running a script, reading a script. Uh, so you know, you, get, you there's you can deploy apps on our Open Gear product that's close to the device uh, to troubleshoot a network issue. Uh, you can add, you can gather info that's you know. Uh, using predefined capabilities via, you know, a service account, you know, to make it easier uh, than them ha having to actually log in. So, you know, the service account is ac accessing it, maybe using Radius or PACX. And, you know, maybe this helps reduce the uh, false network problem tickets, you know, cable was unplugged and all someone had to do was just go check it or do a show IP interface briefing. Oh yeah, that, that port's down. So just to, you know, as a, as an example of a custom web app, I just, we just put together an easy uh, web app uh, using Python, uh, Python, Flask, and served by G Unicorn. Uh, and we were running it actually on a uh, OM 2224. So I'm gonna switch gears here now and move over to the app. So right now the app you can see here is it's not running. The web app isn't running, so I'm going to look. I'm going to look at my command line on the OM2224. So I'm just going to take a look at my Docker containers. Let's see, so here's my Flask app right here. It's running, called OG app. So I'm going to jump into that and kick off the app. So it's just a you know simple Docker attach, OG app. Now I'm in the container. I just want to run my script to launch G Unicorn, which will launch the actual application itself. And bam, there it's running. And then if I refresh this, there's my there's my web app. So what I have here on the left side, hopefully you guys can see it. I tried to make the the logo, try to make it more readable. Uh, but what you have on the left here is a uh, serial connection to a uh, Cisco 1000 switch and the one on the right is a Cisco ISR 1111 router. So what I wanna do here is on my app, I have a couple of selections here that I put together. Uh, you know, select a privilege exec command for SSH. So that's the first one we'll look at. There's a drop down for the two, two devices, uh, 10002 or 10003. Uh, so let's just pick this first one. And I just want to do a show IP interface brief. I'm going to hit go and it's going to go out and you can see it's doing login uh, info on this router here. And you can see the output bam, it's right there. You copy and paste that into the ticket and it's all good. And let's do the other one. Same thing, you can see the login happen on the switch and bam, there's there's all your info for show IP and for screen. And then you can also do some other commands like, you know, you wanna do show version or show run uh, and it'll pump out, you know, the exact output you want. Uh, let's say you have access to the OM, but you don't have access to the device somehow the device is offline or the ethernet management ethernet ports down or that your management VLAN is crashed, but you still have serial access to it. So you can set it up where you just could use, do the same thing, except use the actual serial ports. Uh, so let's do a, let's do a show version on the Cisco 1000. And then what you'll see is the actual serial commands being entered in here on the switch itself. And then it'll output over on the, uh, on the left side in our web app. And that's just to show you that, hey, I'm not cheating and I'm actually logging in and uh, getting real data off these uh, network devices. Let's do one on the other one. 
Let's just do a ping here, see if that works. So there you go. And just uh, just to show that I'm not Cisco centric here, I actually set it up where uh, you can run this. We have it so you can run uh, some, some basic uh, commands on uh, Juniper SRX. I have an old SRX uh, 210 set up. So let's do it just to show interface terse. And we'll go out SSH and bam, it'll uh, dump out the output if you're familiar with the uh, Junos output. And you could use like a show system of software. And there you go, it's the, uh, you know, it's an old software, of course, but uh, there you go. Let me switch back to, any questions there? Uh, hi, Mark. Yes, I have a question. Sure. It's um, mostly about the ng, <clears throat> like the nginx web server. So, like, what is he doing here? Because I know nginx is like used to like expose maybe a a local URL and make it public. But like on on the UI of like what you're browsing through, I'm still seeing like it's it's so like is nginx exposing? Well, what is nginx doing there? Well, typically, typically you would you would just reverse proxy that. Uh and you, it would give you the ability to type in a host name and rather than go to the uh, typical port 80, it'll forward it, it'll forward it to uh, 8,000. So you would do that like in, uh, so if you ever use G-Unicorn, uh, you have to set out, set up uh, a number of workers and you know, three, five, it doesn't handle a lot of traffic. So if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a lot of traffic hit G Unicorn, you're gonna, most people, well, it's very recommended to use NGINX as a, as a proxy to handle that, handle that uh, outward facing load. All right, the next story is, uh, I'm gonna, is, you know, I'm gonna iperf a couple of test nodes that are OMs. Um, you know, it's basically on-demand remote performance testing. So let's say you have a store manager in Florida report he's really slow connectivity accessing inventory levels at uh, his Nevada warehouse. Uh, the network engineer on duty he wants to run some quick throughput tests between the sites. It's after hours and there's no IT yet staff at the, floor, at the Florida store. So, you know, he wants to get in there and test the connectivity, but how is he going to do that remotely? Uh, you know, a lot of times what you see is someone, you know, if there is somebody on site, they, they show up there and they got their laptop or, or whatnot, and they have to plug in to do, you know, uh, to do some throughput testing, you know, some pings, MGen, iperf, or maybe a Ixia type solution. Uh, or sometimes, you know, people will have out there, you know, Raspberry Pis out in their IDFs or Intel Nooks out in their IDFs or remote, remote sites or remote branches. Uh, I've done that quite a bit you know, stick uh, nooks and pies out there as MGen or iperf endpoints. Uh, you know, if you have a open gear device already there, eating up some rack space, you know, this is a way to leverage uh, that device that's already there to do the same thing you're already doing with your 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 nook or your uh, shadow IT assets as, as Ryan uh, put it earlier. So like I said, luckily a smart day recently decided to put open gear devices at all their locations. So they're able to run these tests. So essentially I'm gonna run a Docker container from one OM, uh, you know, through the network to another OM. Um, that's also running, you know, acting as a, it's listening uh, for another OM to come in and run an iProf test. Switch back to the app. So same thing here, it's the same diagram. And uh, basically what I have set up uh, is a 10 second, 10 second test from the client, the Florida OM client. 
So it'll take about 10 seconds to run this. So I'm gonna hit run. And then hopefully we'll get a we'll get some results. And there you go. There's our our throughput results uh, from running the iProp test. So that's something you know. Uh, you know, iProf Docker containers are readily available. They're easy to build. So you could probably download them uh, straight from Docker Hub, um, and you know incorporate them in some, you know a typical solution like that, like this. And this is just something you know we came up with just to, as a demo to show the flexibility and how you can run different types of apps, uh, whatever you can think of, custom or uh, you know pre-built apps uh, on the open your device. These test applications very you know. CLI driven and it scares me to have um, you know my my fresh out of school knock folks <laughs> launching Docker images on devices in areas that are two hour drives from where we all live. So sure, sure. what do you do on the front end of this to avoid accidents? Uh, so so obviously they're not. I mean, it's all abstracted. So this, their scripts, I put a script together that actually goes out and builds, actually builds up or turns on those Docker containers that are already pre-built. Uh, so really they're not doing anything, but you know, as you saw in the app, they're just clicking a button. They don't really have to do anything. So, But to get to that button, they had to manually launch the Docker container. I mean, don't you put some kind of front end oh, no, no. there? Oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you mean. No, so to launch the demo that was just me showing you how to deploy it this would be something that's already you would probably already launch it uh that could be already running because it's very low low in resources this could already be running out on the om uh itself typically they wouldn't launch this necessarily and go through and type all those apps uh and you could easily just script that to make it some you know instead of what i did what i showed you where i Type into those couple of commands. You could script that or abstract that away so a user could just one click or, you know, just leave it running out on your device, actually. And what about your Lighthouse software in the back end? Don't you have a GUI or something on the front end so you can do this kind of stuff without having to send everybody to 50 different individual devices? Um, uh, you could you could potentially do that. I mean, this this was kind of built. This was built uh, outside the scope of Lighthouse, um, but certainly you could access something like this from from Lighthouse uh, through the. Uh, then we have uh, what is the process when you go to it? Is that uh, AG or through our IP access in uh, Lighthouse. So what would I be using Lighthouse for then if my troubleshooting is all happening here on the command line? I'm a, I'm a little confused on how I manage this system and use it to troubleshoot. Well, um... Sure, sure. Well, Lighthouse, I mean, like I said, this was just kind of thrown together as, a, as an example where Lighthouse gives you visibility. Think of it as a, uh, an EMS for your uh, open gear devices. Yes, uh, uh, one spot where you can see all your open gear devices rather than having to have a lot of different uh, a lot of different bookmarks. Or if you use something like Putty or Secure CRT, having a ton of different bookmarks for all the different sites. Lighthouse can give you just one spot where you can launch your SSH consoles from there. Uh, you can launch any of the consoles or CLI or consoles or web UIs for any of your open your devices as well. So think of it more like a EMS uh, for your operations managers or your other open gear console servers.